What's up, everybody? It's Andrew Velasquez with Mindful Artist Podcast, and I'm so excited to be here with you all today and share with you my special guests. And today I have the amazing, super talented Latino excellence himself, Jesse Garcia. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy for you to be here. You're literally kicking this off as my first official guest. So I'm so grateful to have you and to have known you for such a long time and just watch you grow and blossom and really inspire so many people because you are an inspiration. You know that you're the, you're the man, you're the king. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so Likewise. who is Jesse Garcia? Jesse Garcia started in a award-winning film, Quinceanera, written and directed by Wash Westermoreland and Richard Glatzer with executive producer Todd Haynes which won both the Grand Jury Prize and the Audience Award at the 2000 Sundance, 2006 Sundance Film Festival in the Dramatic Independent Feature Competition. Quinceanera was also selected to play at the 2006 Berlin Film Festivals. Garcia won Best Actor at the 2007 Alma Awards for his role as Carlos, a troubled gay teenager in Quinceanera. He appeared in the thriller Locker 13 in 2009, he made a cameo appearance on Marvel's The Avengers in 2012. Garcia was born in Rollins, Wyoming, and spent most of his childhood in Hannah, Wyoming. He was raised as a Jehovah's Witness. He, though he no longer practices that faith, his sister, one year younger, worked oil field trucking for over 19 years. His father is from a Mexican state of Durango, and his mother, a native of Wyoming, is a Spanish and a Mexican descent. He appeared in 2010's revival Pee Wee Herman show, and in the 2010 music video of Wizen and Yandel's Estoy Enamorado. He also portrayed uh, Richard Montañez in the biographical movie Flaming Hot 2023 based on Montañez's disputed claim of inventing Flaming Hot Cheetos directed by Eva Longoria. Oh my God, what a bio. Like what, what do you think? What do you have to say Where'd about that? Where'd you get that? that? Did, you, did you write that? Uh, no, I just... Googled it, looked up Jesse Garcia bio quick, and this is what came up. Is everything accurate? I hope so. Yeah, I, I, pretty pretty close. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I'm, I mean, how did that start? Like, tell us about Wyoming and your upbringing, and let's start from the beginning. I was uh, I was born there, right? And yeah. how did it, how was it growing up there? Was it was it fun? I know that you were an athlete. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, I think you always want to leave the place you grow up and because you, you don't appreciate it as a kid. So, yeah. um, but I go back and I kind of appreciate it more as an adult and want to, I'd actually like to buy property there somewhere in the mountains. And away yeah. from everybody and I've never own, been, is it a beautiful, is it a beautiful yeah. nature area? Really, really pretty. The winters are rough though. Yeah. I can imagine winters are tough summers are beautiful spring and fall are really nice it just won't winters are tough it's already snowed there i think cool yeah it's definitely getting a lot colder at this time of the year well let's fast forward to moving to los angeles when did you realize like this is my home this is where i need to be and california is a state for you um well i started out i was going to school in nebraska um i had a cheerleading scholarship and i um i was uh i met a friend ran into a friend on campus one day and we were talking about what we wanted to do with our lives. And, and she wanted to be an actor and model. And we were both super young, 20, 21 and 19. And, yeah. um, and, and she had, she was going to go to Atlanta to study with this guy named Judson Vaughn, who was an actor, director, producer, writer, had an acting studio. Very cool. Some scenes, scenes study classes. And she invited me to come. And the short version of that is that, like, I eventually said yes after kind of like much debate and, and uh, moved to Atlanta with her to study acting. And this was in 2000. So I was there for three and a half years. And then I moved to LA nice. um, after that in December of 2003. So almost, almost 20 years ago. Amazing. That's like half, half the life of Jesse Garcia, like back in the day, 2000, early Y2K before yeah, social yeah. media. And how, what do you, what is your take on, you know, pre social media, pre internet, pre all that? Cause I feel well, like I think um, I think um, like the generation Xennial, I think is what we're called. Like, but there's a gap. There's like a like a like mid seventies to like very early eighties. There's a Correct. small little generation of us who um, 
who are kind of the last of the, the kids that used to go play outside and didn't have internet. I grew up without internet, but internet and social media became a part of our lives. So it's like, we're, we're in that cusp where it's, we still use it a lot. Right. Right. Um, um, so I still enjoy being outdoors and I still, all them, I'm just as addicted to my phone as everybody else. <laughs> um, um, but I, I, I know how to fix stuff. I, I build things. Uh, occasionally I'll work on cars, I'll figure stuff out. Um, so I'm still of that generation. Like, and there's some, there's obviously still people in, in, in young generation that like to do those kind of things, but it's, yeah. it's changed quite a bit. So I, I, I'm glad I came from that era and I still feel like I'm a little nah, but I'm still the generation. I still feel like I'm behind, you know, the younger generation where everything, I feel like that. they grew up with all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really 100%. I did the intro a couple of days ago and was reminiscing on growing up with my brothers and yeah, I mean, we would play with like rocks and dirt and wood and like climb on trees. And, you know, we had power wheels, but we would just take the battery out because it wasn't fast enough. And we were just like chamacos and just getting into trouble. And, you know, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm grateful for that, too, because that I feel like taught us work ethics, uh, communication skills, how to interact and not just to be a human with other humans. Um, yeah. But yeah, now with online media innovation, it's kind of like, you have to be a little bit of both. You have to have a hybrid of understanding both. And so that's really why I wanted to create this too, is to have that balance, right? Because mm. it, it can be a lot. It can be a lot and it can consume a lot of your mental health if you're constantly on the social media. So how do you find that you balance that today? Like where are you at? I mean, with... I, mean I think we're, you know, un unfortunately our parents, like we have, I had to figure out my, like my mental health stuff as I went along, you know, I, um, I've had some great conversations with different people over the years and, uh, but I've kind of, for the most part, had to figure it out myself. Yeah. Uh, um, and it's not, it's not really to any fault of our parents. They just didn't have any, they just didn't have the tools. Right. You know what I mean? Like the young generation now, like it's almost too many, they almost have too many tools. It's like, it's almost can, like, uh, it's almost, uh, um, like tool fatigue, you know what yeah. I mean? Like they have yeah. so many resources and it's almost confusing, right? Like with, and without, and I think what the younger generation now has the advantage of is like um, whether they're, you know, parents from my generation or even a little bit younger is that they do have more tools and they can be yeah. a better guidance. But it's also like, how do we navigate all of the tools to make sure that we're kind of not fucking up our kids and, you know, the yeah. younger generation, I don't have kids, but right. um, 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 but it's, you know, it's like. And I think as much as we can, we're trying we're trying to help the older generations to kind of navigate the stuff that we don't even necessarily understand. You know, what For I mean? sure. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that I don't get, but I'm trying to I'm trying to understand and be empathetic. And, and yeah. at, at the same time, I'm going like, you know, some of it doesn't make sense to me and, and <laughs> which is which is fine. Right. You know, I I I need certain things explained to me more, you know, yeah. what I mean, um, uh, suffixes for different words and, and, yes. and pronouns yes. and, yeah. and uh, things. And, and, and I think even, f I think it's confusing to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, and I, and I do my best and everyone, I think everyone does their best. And I think it's, I think it behooves everybody to kind of be patient with everybody without being, you know, finding ways of, of not being triggered. Yeah. You said it perfectly. It's, it can be overwhelming and everyone has an opinion and everybody wants to be heard and everybody wants their parade and their act, you know, synonym, acronym, whatever they, they want to be part of, essentially you want to think about it. They want to be part of community. They want to be heard and seen, right? Like that's, right. and that's really what this, the point of this podcast is as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, like specifically Latinx, like I wasn't unsure. I didn't even know like why, like when I just finally started researching. So I think that's the thing is like, if you have the tools to research and the resources to get out and see where the information is accurate, if it's hopefully accurate. And I kind of like it now it's to just gender neutralize Latin generation and it kind of modernize it a little bit. So it's taking away that, you know, old school, like macho masculinity kind of mentality with like latino or latina it's just we're all latinx like it's just kind of generalizing so yeah john Leguizamo said it really well in his um his show and i love that guy he's just one of my heroes 
Um, but yeah, I think it's just humans are humans. We're all on the same planet, just trying to figure this shit out, just trying to get day by day. And I know for uh, for me, it's like, and I, I know you can probably relate to this too, is like our parents did what they were able to do with the tools and the resources they had. They didn't know what they inherited through their parents and naturally that's going to kind of be in the household and then we as sponges are also going to inherit some of their mental health issues so i was very aware of that at such a young age and just saw the effects that it had like specifically with my mom so i mean i I had to take it upon myself to to do the research and to do the homework and to seek for therapy and i freaking love it i'm like the biggest advocate for therapy it's so fun it's uh, i've been going to it since i was 15 and it's just it's just a healthy way to like express yourself and purge and let all those emotions that we store sometimes and it stays in our body and we don't even realize it and it comes out and and it just like it, it can be an attack or it hurts someone else and we're not aware of it. Um, so I think, yeah, with the younger generation, having that awareness and, you know, streamlining the information that they're intaking and then maybe figuring out what kind of algorithm do you want, not only in your social media, but in, within your life, you know, what kind of algorithm do you want to like manifest? Cause that's what you're going to portray. It's like karmatic energy. Right. So yeah, I think having a little disconnect sometimes helps and just uh detox from the digital era is very, very healthy. Um, But let's talk about your latest project. Oh my God. I was so happy for you. Like I was like, finally the world gets to see the Jesse Garcia that I've been I've experienced and witnessed and we all because we're all fans of you, right? But like Disney, Flaming Hot, like Eva, like that's just magnitude. That's massive. So how was that experience for you? And you did a fantastic job, brother. I'm so Thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Um, it was probably it was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, you know. It's um uh from the second I read the breakdown into reading the script, I I felt like all oh, this, th- if this was written for me, yeah. You know? Um, there was never a doubt in my mind that I could do the do the role justice and do Richard justice and do Eva justice. Um, um, but it was also a huge undertaking, you know what I mean? Like, and I tried not to let the pressure of um being number one on a call sheet for for a movie uh a studio movie right that yeah um you know latinos don't often get uh like eva likes to say a bite at the apple and we didn't we didn't have room to fail like we didn't have we didn't like we don't get that chance very often like we don't we just don't get it like if it, if a you know uh, a multi-million dollar studio film has they're giving us a chance to shoot a movie and it and it fails or it's like we, we don't yeah we don't get those chances um yeah. and to it's been 20 some years since a female a latina female has directed a studio film so that's that's a huge thing as well right um and it was just a you know just a ton of dialogue and and trying to you know on honor and do richard justice because because him and his family are still alive you know yeah like, yeah I, they they would be on set and and i never felt any pressure from them um, okay um i mean there was a there was a there was a scene i think by now everyone's seen the movie um or most oh they haven't they live in a rock yeah um um i think it's going to be a new resurgence as soon like now that the strike's over um we there was uh the scene where at the, at the beginning of the movie so i'm not really spoiling anything where uh richard and judy are in a car and richard's saying like how he like what if she likes a new car and and, da, 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 and it turns out he stole the car and this happened in real life um and richard and judy were on set that day and annie and i are doing the scene and we're improvising and i'm uh, i'm i'm saying what i'm saying and, and they call cut and we go back to video village where everyone's around the monitors watching the scene and the, richard and judy have and the kids all have their kids were there too and they have headphones on and they're, they're watching the scene and everyone's wow. crying richard and judy are crying um uh and uh we go over to them and everyone's teary-eyed and eva cries every day um <laughs> that's healthy and, it's very healthy yeah it was healthy and, and richard and judy came over and hugged us and richard grabbed me and hug, hugged me and he looked me in the eye teary-eyed and and he goes um i get it now 
I get I get what you're doing because you know when you see someone like especially for Richard and my my theory is, is like when you see when you have have um you're putting your story in the hands of people that you know you're you're trusting but it's still a very vulnerable place you don't really know what they're going to do with it right right and I'm you know even I, I've been doing this for a long time and but I'm still not a household name you know, I was, you know, we'll see what happens in the next year, but, uh, I, I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't super famous. So like the, nobody, he, Richard didn't really know who I was. Right. He had a, a, other ideas in mind for other people. He wanted like to be play, play the role and I, I'm the one who got it. So right. to have, to have having our, us come not, and also from, he's not really, he's not a filmmaker. So like he, for us to do pieces like out of order and i'm doing something specific in each scene because i know i'm working on i'm working on the mic everything i'm working on the micro that's working to the macro right i'm sure. doing one puzzle piece of time for this big puzzle right yeah this fifty thousand piece puzzle and he starts to see the pieces come together and the picture starting to reveal itself and it kind of revealed itself in this one scene where he goes okay i get it now i get what you're doing because you know some of the things i do between different takes are a little little a little risky right they're not yeah you know i had a conversation with him at the beginning before the movie started i go just so you know i'm not going to be doing an imitation of you i'm not right. going to be i'm not going to mimic you uh, i'm not going to like try to imitate your movements i'm going to be doing my version of your story with respect and honor right Love that. because i i, I just want i for me the important part was pay, paying respects to his story and mm -hmm. telling the story as a whole um and you know, again, he's like in a very vulnerable place to have someone, their stories, like they're some, so they're, we swept, lifted up the rug and yeah. pulled out some dirt and, you know what I mean? It was, it's, they're still alive. So it's a very vulnerable thing. Absolutely. Um, he starts to see this come together and he goes, okay, I get it. I get it now. I see what you guys are doing. Like, yeah. It's like for them, like their heart opened and the floodgates opened. I love that. That's so magical to I just got like chills as you were explaining that. I yeah, to do his story justice and to do it in authentically Jesse Garcia's way in homage to, you know, Morales' story is like a beautiful way to interpret that and and express that. I think that's you did it justice, man. It was just beautiful. Just the whole thing, the from the beginning to the end, like all of it, I was just, I, I had to watch it more than once. Cause I was just like, yeah, I was your biggest cheerleader right there. Eating bread and hot <laughs> Cheetos you. too. And, Cause you know, I love, I know you don't probably don't even eat that, but I actually do love flaming hot Cheetos. And it just was like full circle, you know, like I'm from Boyle Heights, East LA and we grew up with that. So those scenes of him, like going to the parks, I was probably in that park. I was probably one of the first ones to like actually taste that. And then to see my friend and, you know client and jesse like just uh it was just like a full circle for me so for me it was very personal it was something that like resonated with me on so many levels and if i'm just one that one person like that can relate to it that way i can only imagine others you know like other generations that are younger than me that can also relate to it too so well done good job i'm just you know, it's so funny it's like a lot of you. a lot of you know we had a lot of latinos we had a lot, a lot of early screenings so we got to meet a lot of people that came out nice. and he has a a really great story um how she had a screening and a lot of her family came out to a screening yeah and uh i think i'm gonna tell i think i'm gonna tell it wrong but i think one of her cousins uh her cousin's mom died her aunt okay her 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 aunt i want to something I'm, i might be messing up some details but we'll say it's a the yeah, it's all good the, the essence of the story is is after the movie was over uh the cousin came up to Annie and goes, I got to see my mom again. Oh, right? and it was really, it was really, beautiful. really beautiful. And oh. so, and so it meant a lot to a lot of people, yeah. especially Latinos, but it also crossed cultural lines. It transcended all the cultural lines because people Absolutely. from around the world, I had the most, the coolest, youngest white kids come up to me and go, it was their favorite movie. Of course. Right? and and some uh, freaking disney <laughs> disney but it's like for for people of 
all areas of life, you know, like yeah. to, to come up and go, this is, it was really, it's a really great movie and we're really proud of you. It's, it matters a lot to, to, for me, that, that was the big kind of thing I wanted to do is make sure I want to make universal stories, right? I want to, of course, I want to make culturally relevant movies as well, but I want to make universal stories that, that uh, cross those lines so that there are, you know, I don't mind being someone who paves way and being part of that, you know, like Leguizamo is one of them and Edward James Owens yeah. is one of them. Yeah, I like there's so many people. Um, yes. And I, I I don't mind being one of those people for the younger and next generations and even people who are older than me who want to want to do the same thing and, and film like whether it's behind the camera in front of the camera. 100 percent. And that's what I love about you since the get go, since I uh, discovered you in Quinceanera, like you, that was also very cultural and very close to heart and very Echo Park, which is literally where my parents migrated from mexico like they lived in echo park in the 70s and then you're doing this film and i'm like and then i lived there for like 10 years so it's just mm -hmm. you've been doing that and practicing that and that's what i love about jesse garcia it's just authentic raw genuine and just proud like that's just those are all really great qualities and for so, better or for worse you know. <laughs> but we love you for that so um tell us what are some of the practices or routines that you've put into your you know daily uh schedule to nurture your creativity but also kind of keep spirituality while running your business i know it's like a loaded question <laughs> that's a loaded question um i mean i work out every day i train every day love um, that with our boy elon uh, yeah whether it's lifting or yoga or pilates or walking it's something you know i'm doing something yeah. every day um i meditate yeah most, most most days um i eat right you know i yeah. i've i've learned to set boundaries with with myself and others you know um yeah. i'm learning to be more clear with my communication um uh, in all relationships um sure. um you know and and, and um it's, it's, I mean, and, those are all and, strong takeaways. Yeah, and enjoying the wins. You know what I mean? Like every, yeah. they're all, they're all, every little win's a win. You know, those. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like we've gotten to a point where humility hurts us, right? Mm. We're, we're if we're so like, especially Latinos in the industry, like be humble mm -hmm. you're you're working like, yeah yeah but i belong here yeah and I, why I, why can't we be proud and loud I about can, it too I, I can be proud i'm not being boastful but i'm like no i'm also i feel like i belong in a room just as good as much as anybody else 100 percent. you know what i mean you also earned it i've been putting in work for 23 years you know yep. what i mean so and i'm working on so many other things i'm working on uh directing and producing and writing and and shut up yeah and tell us about that. that yeah i'm so many i'm i'm, produ I'm I directing can. yeah i can i can I, i'm directing um a documentary right now that I'll, we're starting to pitch out um nice. got a really great trailer and um just other projects that i'm developing just just writing a bunch of stuff all genres uh, I'm hoping to direct something here within the next year or so. Um, Amazing. So working, working on taking some meetings and and developing a bunch of things and and um, and seeing what next next projects that come along. The strike kind of like didn't really kill anything, but it's like yeah. there's a lot of meetings and stuff I had with with studios and producers and stuff to see what we what you know what I want to do next and what do they have and 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 the roster what we can work together on um, and just to kind of keep keep the momentum going keep the uh, keep the train going so let's yeah let's talk stop, about stop. that like how do you keep the creative juices flowing as an artist like what maybe i know we just had that strike but do you journal do you write like or what are some kind of techniques or i've been i've been i haven't been writing as much but i do write i do enjoy right. writing um and i haven't been journaling as much like if i but that is something i do again I'll, i i like writing um um, photography is one. Um, yes. I enjoy learning different aspects of filmmaking, editing, uh, lighting. Like I'm building my own little pin pinhole camera right now. Um, so dope. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I like to shoot. I like to be creative. Um, and finding different ways of of uh, doing something that's already been done, been done. You know what I mean? Like just different aspects of remixing re recreating, it, recreating, remixing art. You know, that's so uh, dope. Rediscovering, um, uh, and you know, just hanging out with friends, kind of like mashing brains together and and see whatever else is whatever. Falling off is each doing. other's ideas, brainstorming. Yeah, we should. There's so much. There's so much work to be done that that's we shouldn't be hoarding our own work. Right. Um, just to ourselves because that's that's our that's our project. You know what I mean? Like help everyone should be helping each other. We should all 100%. be working together. You know, you help me, I help you. If the if it's right, of course. Yeah. Uh, um, shut this window. You're good. My neighbors have like loud non. <laughs> muffler scooters i didn't hear that. anything you're good yeah. no but literally um, that's like the point to this podcast too is to celebrate each other and encourage one another to pursue those passion projects and like you said it earlier there's enough room for everybody like we, why not help each other you know what i mean like we're we're all we got so <laughs> this is our only chance this is our only i life. also think it's going to be it's an interesting time too with you know how um it's it's come to light how much power the studios have right the corporations have that yeah. there's got to be there's got to be other ways of doing things Absolutely. you know what i mean doing work so i think there's going to be a lot of change within and how projects are getting done yeah. um there's going to be ways of doing things more independently and not relying so heavily on studios and so heavily on like major um corporations to to get our projects out there you know what i mean i mean of course you know there it's hollywood it is what it is and we're, we need the studios but i think there's other ways of doing things 100 percent, especially with online media innovation having access to youtube having access to all these other streaming services and you having the experience and the expertise within with your craft you 100 percent can do that with the team and the friends that you know are going to have each other's back and and have that same kind of like vision so yeah, I see big things. I definitely see your name being a household name within a year, for sure. After this, it's like the opportunities are endless. You know what I mean? Like just, um, so let's talk about that. Like what, how do you manifest? Like how do you pursue a goal and then make it happen? Like what are those uh, strategies for you? Well, here's the thing that I didn't have when I had did quinceanera, right? And okay. and for me, like that was one of a big learning curve for me is that um I, I was playing the humble artist. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't have the business sense about the business that I do now. And I'm still learning a lot. Uh and this again, this is my first rodeo at a studio level. Sure. With kind of a higher profile movie like like Flame and Hot. And Quince when Quinceanera came out, it was a non-union movie. Right. I got paid a a thousand dollars to do that movie um back in the day so like yeah. we there was it wasn't it was it was a little basically a little home movie that, that yeah. Washington richard um made uh and i and i was kind of like the new it kid for a little bit mm -hmm. you know what i mean like young young guy on the block um and i didn't really and i didn't have the money uh to get a publicist really right. um i didn't know anything about campaigning for awards um um and you know my manager at the time she probably she definitely knew more than i did but there was just like those mistakes that or things that we could have done better right so now this round right. is like we're you know we're being more smart about it we have more more of a business sense about it it's just, it's a bigger ball game right so like we're we're going out, we're campaigning for stuff and we're going to be working to see, you know, what we can get out of it, you know, like get mm -hmm. working to get to the next level, right? Trying to get bigger jobs, higher profile jobs or just great jobs, just great scripts. Like, I don't, I, it, let's go, me, let's do it. it doesn't matter. Like I, I'm more of, I'm kind of approaching this thing as from a business perspective is like, I just want to do yeah. really great work and work with really fucking awesome people. Right. And have a good time doing it. it. Yeah, and have a great time doing it and providing um, opportunities for my friends and people who I I want to see have a chance. You know what I mean? Like people, some of my friends who are fantastic artists, yeah. whether they're an actor, whether they're behind below the line, 
the, uh, to give them a chance to kind of express themselves in their art and 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 be on bigger projects or at least get in the door and kind of meet other people you know what i mean yeah that's um, beautiful yeah i love that no it's i think every project and every experience you've had up until now it's prepped you for the next step you know maybe if you didn't have those learning curves with quinceanera you wouldn't have been as confident with your networking and negotiation now um so i, I mean even going forward like every gig is gonna like help you propel to the next level and i'm a believer of that like i don't know if jesse in 2000 would be prepared for what is happening in 2023 you know what i'm saying so it's like you have to hit those like highs and the lows universe, the universe is funny man like you, you just don't know you just don't yeah. know you still know yeah. for some reason it didn't like i had a couple movies that didn't end that i did that never came out right when i right after quinceanera one was, should have been a higher profile movie that may or mm -hmm. may not have me a household name because it was had some bigger actors in it and it was a was a pretty good movie uh and i think it would still be a good movie like i think it would mm -hmm. still do well i don't be it might be a period movie at this point but uh <laughs> it was 15 16 years old right 15 years old um um, but it, it potentially could have made me a household name back, you know, 17 years ago. So who knows, man? Like, yeah, like if you, you know, the, the universe is kind of like, she's beautiful. She's yeah. got her back. She's going to guide it. You, you just have to trust it. Like you, I'm the reason I'm saying this even with more confidence now is my mother, rest in peace, passed away this past June. And I mean, I was she was the closest person that I was ever with, like in my life. And even now as she's passed, like all these like little sparkles and signs of just like, Mio, mm -hmm. you got this, like use your voice. Like that's the gift. I'm like, what mom? Like, so, and it's the universe helping and guiding, like seeing these little things. So I'm a believer of that. Like just trusting the yeah. process and just being vulnerable is beautiful. And um allowing yourself to be open-minded for what's to come you know all right i have another yeah. question um can you, you share any of course no thank you for allowing me can you share any tips or advice for aspiring entrepreneurs looking to incorporate more creativity while balancing their spirituality in their work um For me, I would say more, it's more about asking questions and being inquisitive about other people as opposed to, mm. um, as opposed to kind of like, um, bestowing your own beliefs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just learning. Because, yeah. Cause everyone's everyone, I think none, none of our, like none of our beliefs and opinions are really our own. Right. 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 They're all a, they're all uh, an amalgamation and and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's, a cum it's, cumulative pile of shit that we've heard and exactly. Read. <laughs> Someone's told us like, oh, I like that, I like that, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that because that person's so and so. And and our brain know. stores it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so we we create a belief system of our own based on other things we've none of it's like we're we're a blank slate like we yeah. don't have those systems when we're born right we might have for me Thank i believe you. Life, we might we might have some stuff that we've carried on from past lives but even those belief systems are from something else right right so who knows where that stuff has come from if you have if you go into conversations and spirituality and all these things with an open mind I, i'm i i'm i i i am not religious i don't um i don't really know where i stand Honestly, mm -hmm. like I'm an agnostic, atheist, something. I don't know. Um, love it. Love it. But I, but if I'm happy to have a, con a conversation about spirituality, because I'm still, I think I'm con contradicting a, spirit a spiritual in a sense. You know what I mean? Um, but to, to be able to be open and ask questions and try to understand why this other person or group of people believe what they believe. Mm -hmm. And you may, may not agree with them, but there's ways of having conversations um without uh major conflict and being triggering legit i mean if you think about the human brain like this is this is facts like we're only born with two fears as an infant the fear of falling because we were neanderthals at one point that lived in trees 
um and we just live day by day to survive and the fear of loud noises because that would kind of coincide with being eaten by whatever animal was out there all these other other fears that we inherit they're not freaking real none of them are real like back to what you were saying earlier we're a blank slate we can literally become whatever the fuck you want in this world like the opportunities are endless but you just have to believe that and you have to eliminate those fears and almost like retrain your brain like you said being open-minded to whatever spirituality means for that individual and retrain the brain to focus on the light focus on positivity there's so much negativity out there already as it is why do we need to instill that into our brains and into our systems when you can live life with just kindness and respect and having healthy boundaries and treating yourself with respect and being kind to you and if you have an inner saboteur or a negative thought being aware of that and then retraining it by saying two compliments to yourself like there's so many resources and tools that we have out there the brain is a magical freaking thing like i'm obsessed with how it works and how we can really navigate our lives day by day but then also like long term what you can accomplish like it's amazing it's a really amazing and beautiful thing i'm so grateful for our human brains <laughs> um but yeah thank you for sharing that on spirituality same like i mean i grew up like super straight catholic you're sinning you're gay you're going to hell like, all this stuff right and um although i like i really enjoyed some of the traditions about it there's something about the, the sage and the praying and i do pray but it's more like i also like hindu and i like buddhism and i like you know mm -hmm. um i i'm this is what i say like i'm my spirituality is mother nature like i'm a student to the practice of being a human and being kind to animals and to the earth and to plants and to and to other humans because that's that's my religion is to just live of essence of beauty and color and and try to share that light with whoever i pass wherever i go you know um and I, w I wish that would be kind of like a viral thing. You know, I hope others, and I'm kind of seeing it a little bit, especially in uh, in our Latin community like now, specifically just we're, we're holding each other accountable. We're having each other's backs. Um, I mean, this conversation today, I'm so grateful for that. So we just got to keep that momentum going, like just sharing love and light to each other. You know what I mean? Um, but, okay, so wrapping up, I have some really cool mindful artists rapid cues i like to call them uh so these are the top three questions and just where you're at there's you don't have to think about it too much just kind of let it come naturally uh that's why why it's a rapid question so question number one jesse who is your hero and why um what's the definition of a hero mm, heroic someone that has made an impact in your life that uh shapes pretty much your fantasy dream person mm. but i like that you're asking a question with a question <laughs> yeah um see these questions are funny to me because there's like uh it, to put someone that high up on, on a pedestal there's just like i don't have favorites right there's so many people that have influenced my life for one aspect or another. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, of course, of course, my parents, they, they you know, they did what mm -hmm. they, they raised me, they did what they could um, for as different as I, as I was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wanting to leave as early as possible when I was a little kid, <laughs> wanting to move to the city. Um, um, it could be, it could be, and any number of people I've seen on on Instagram, right? Yeah, like they yeah. do something really beautiful. I'm like, oh, that's really that's really beautiful. Um, um, I have soulmates, right? My friend Allegra is one of my soulmates. And yeah, is one of my soulmates. Um, uh, Wilmer Valderrama is one of my brothers. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. like people in my life who are very special. You, you're very special to me. Thank um, you. So there, and, and there's so many artists. Like, I can't. For me, those questions are funny because I can't. To, to narrow they're limiting and they narrow they narrow there's too narrow of a focus i'll take it that's an i love it that's an authentic jesse answer always honest okay question number two what is your favorite music album of all time and why 
favorite music album um you know one of my favorite concerts i went to when i was younger was uh was a motley at the Warfield. nice that's um, awesome yeah it was a motley when i first saw them god what was it two 1997 were you in the mosh pit i didn't mosh but i was like i remember it was uh Mighty, I think Mighty Mighty Boss Tones were playing too. That's the name. That's the name of the band, right? Mighty Mighty that's Boss. So Tones. sick. Um, so I was, can see you, know, you like with a lot of hair just rocking out too. Right my hair was never the my, my hair was only long once. Um, but when I heard Ozumatli play, I had never heard of him before, and they were like the sound. You right. know what I mean? The sound that angelic. At every, at every so the uh the Warp Tour. I don't know if you've ever been. No several stages but i heard been, of it was i think it was in boulder colorado and there might have been like five six stages something like that like just wow they all came over to ozomotley because ozomotley was going off right right and it was such a fun concert and uh, and i got the album i'm like oh man it's just the album's so good too but the concert was just the experience yeah. it was just the experience of the concert was just it, the vibe was so like the frequencies that were coming out of like it's almost imagine it's, that at red rocks <laughs> yeah it like would break everything <laughs> that's so, so cool thank you for sharing that um cool all right last rapid question uh what's your favorite quote 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 i know quote. i said it weird your favorite quote quote um so many um um I don't think I heard it anywhere, but I say a lot that um um the speak the things you speak become your truth. Dang, that's deep. Yeah. That's manifestation. It's the sensory mode, right? The sensory system. You're speaking it out into the universe. That's gonna be your truth. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Oh my goodness. This was awesome. You're so yeah, cool. You I'm are. like, I'm just I feel great. I feel good after talking to you. I'm going to go for a run now. <laughs> Thank you, you so much, everybody, for listening to us today on The Mindful Artist. We have Jesse Garcia, and I want you to go out there and make an impact to someone else. Go share some love and light. My kings and queens and all in betweens, this is it. This is our time to shine. So let's go. I'll see you at the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Mindful Artist Podcast. Thank you so much. Bye, Jesse. Bye. All right.